Welcome. This is our first tutorial for DCS World, so it seemed appropriate that we take on the only aircraft ever that held every heavier-than-air fixed-wing flight record simultaneously. This is takeoff and landing for the 1903 Wright Flyer. The 1903 Flyer is a community mod by Grinelli. As such, install it in your Save Games Mods Aircraft folder instead of your main installation folder. To actually fly the aircraft, you'll need to use the mission editor to place one on a map of your choice. You can start it in the air, but for the full experience, place the machine set to take off from runway. For this demonstration, we've selected McCarran International Airport in Las Vegas, Nevada, runway 25 right. In addition to axes for your standard pitch, roll, and throttle, there are two controls you should map before attempting to fly. These are the engine on-off and JADO. Yes, JADO. The 1903 Flyer does not have wheels, nor does its 12 horsepower engine produce enough thrust to push the machine to a takeoff speed. Envisioning the recruiting power of the movie Top Gun 80 years before it was filmed, the first successful aircraft was launched by a weight-driven single-rail catapult. This is simulated in DCS World by the JADO mechanism. It is worth noting that the real 1903 Flyer did not have a throttle. The 180-pound aluminum block engine ran at one speed. The chain-driven push propellers were not adjustable. So for the full immersion experience, once we push the throttle to the stops, we're going to leave it there for the entire flight. Okay, let's take off. Set to max throttle. The plane will start to move. Once it does, push the JADO button to activate the catapult. The moment of liftoff will take some practice. If you keep the front rudder steady, the plane will lift off on its own. You'll have the instinct to pull up to climb. Resist it. You actually want to push the control forward slightly to keep level and gain airspeed and stability. Not too much, though. You'll find the machine is twitchy. It's not a powered kite as much as it is a flying sled. Keeping it under control is all about balance. If you overcorrect, you'll suddenly find yourself stalling and tumbling end over end. Unless you have the patience to spend an hour climbing a few thousand feet, you likely won't have enough altitude to perform a stall recovery, so it's best to avoid the stall in the first place. Let's take a moment to notice the instrumentation. The top spinning thing is the bean can. It's the speed sensor portion of an anemometer. The shielded impeller measures wind speed in the form of RPM to inform indicated airspeed. It's the 1900s equivalent of a pitot. Below that is a stopwatch, and at the bottom is the indicator for the anemometer. It's labeled in meters, but it acts like meters per half second, which roughly equates to knots indicated airspeed. To our right, you may notice a large black block. This is the water tank for cooling the engine. I'm not going to turn my head here, but if I did, you'd see we're laying next to four inline cylinders banging away to maintain a little more than 1,000 RPM. Now that we've got some altitude, let's go ahead and turn to proceed on our orbit so we can cover landing. Like climbing, turning is a balancing act. Famously, the machine banked and performed automatically coordinated turns by wing warping and shifting the pilot's weight in a cradle. It seems archaic, but wing warping is actually highly effective. If you apply too much bank, the plane will slip and begin to fall sideways. Airflow over the wings will stall and you'll depart controlled flight. You can avoid this by keeping your turns gentle. Keep it under 20 degrees of bank and you should be okay. The machine is slow enough that you'll still have a pretty small circle. You may also have to reverse your bank input in order to hold your angle, especially if you bank too sharply. Don't pull up to force the turn. This will throw you out of balance very quickly. You might notice I'm actually using the canard elevator as a guide for attitude. It's handy, like a sort of steampunk HUD. Sight the horizon relative to it, and its position will measure your bank and angle of attack. 
Orville called this rig the front rudder, and it is controlled by the wooden stick on the left, turning a sprocket, moving the looped chain on the right. If you ever wondered why it's pull to raise the nose of an airplane, it's because of that rig right there. Our stall speed is right about 20 knots. If you slow to that with a high AOA, the machine will pitch straight up and fall backwards. VMAX for controlled flight is about 35 knots, but the closer you get to it, the more unstable the machine will become. We're going to keep our airspeed around 25 knots. As we fly following East Sunset Road, you'll notice that even cars in the slow lane pass us. One of the things I love about this aircraft is the sheer openness of the pilot position. We get a great view of the ground below us, and with the slow speed, it just really feels like flying. We're going to lazily enjoy being above the Las Vegas traffic and take in the sights as we travel toward our approach point for the first of the three landings I'm going to cover. I mentioned that we're going to cover three separate procedures for how to land the 1903 Wright Flyer, but there are really four ways to land it. Three of them are realistic, two of those were actually performed, and one is a method which wasn't available to the Wright brothers. The way I'm not going to cover is stalling close to the ground. The machine will flip over and slam into the terrain. DCS World has yet to register killing me in this kind of landing, so feel free. It is disorienting, and often the plane gets registered as being below the ground. But I'm going to go out on a limb and assume you're not watching a landing tutorial to learn how you can just crash and survive. Other than lining up on the runway, there is nothing to do to prepare for landing. The 1903 Wright Flyer is not equipped with landing gear, flaps, nor trim tabs. It doesn't have a built-in radio either, for obvious reasons. As I mentioned before, the 1903 Flyer did not have an adjustable throttle. As crazy as it sounds, it landed at full power. And that's what we're going to do. The trick here is being timid. If we shoot a normal approach, descending to the runway and flare to bleed airspeed, we'll pitch straight up and stall. Instead, we'll keep balancing and fly to the ground. We're not going to win any awards for putting it down on the numbers, so we'll just descend. Level out. Descend a little more. Try not to overcorrect too many times. And just a little bit. A little bit. We're going to bounce a lot before we get there. What I'm essentially trying to do here is kiss the runway with the skids trying to put as much of the two surfaces together at the same time as possible. We'll come to a stop very fast on account of only doing 25 knots and the landing gear is effectively two worn out brake pads. You might notice I also cut off the engine as soon as we touch down. For our second landing procedure I'm going to show you something that was technically possible but the Wright brothers did not actually do this. Instead of flying to the ground under full power, we're going to get close to position and hit the engine cutoff. The Wright brothers had such a control, but they only used it after touchdown. The machine is a giant kite. It doesn't have great stability in, well, ever. And it doesn't magically smooth out when gliding. But it is easier to do this than trying to fly to the ground. Here we are over the underrun for 2-5 right. We're lined up, and I've just shut off the engine. You'll notice it takes a few seconds to sputter out, but now we are in a glide. That was a little more solid than our full power landing, and we came to a stop a lot quicker too. But we survived, the plane survived, and so on to landing three. This landing procedure is essentially a cheat, because we're going to use the throttle, which wasn't present on the actual aircraft. We perform this approach more like a conventional aircraft. Again though, balance is everything. When you throttle back, it's going to be similar to gliding, but with a little more power. I'm flaring just slightly not so much to bleed airspeed as to touch down with the rear of the skids first. 
and oof, that slammed down a little harder than I wanted and you'll notice that we come to a stop pretty quickly. The one advantage to this technique is that if we want to, we can throttle up again, hit the Jado, and take off if we feel like it. That's about it for takeoff and landing in Grinelli's 1903 Wright Flyer mod for DCS World. A key point to remember, the real trick to controlling the 1903 Flyer isn't any sort of procedure or trim. It doesn't even have trim tabs at all. It's balance. Practice keeping level and making gentle turns. Get a feel for that front rudder control. Try spending an hour just flying barbell orbits over a runway, slowly climbing to a few thousand feet. I hope you found this tutorial entertaining and informative.